Unless they move it. Hey, Spreaker Web Radio, KMN Radio. We're about to go live on Spreecast as we do a countdown. Uh, Anna Croft is going to join us and introduce Are you on Word of God Speak. You're live. Hello, everyone. Um, we are going to play a song. It's called Word of God Speak while my dad is preparing to come welcome out here. Welcome to Firebrand so, Table Talk. So, welcome everyone to Firebrand Table Talk. Um, yeah. And introduce the song. Who's it by? This is by Mercy Me, and it's called Word of God Speak. Okay, tell them they might have to turn their speakers up. You might have to turn your speakers up, and you could probably hear my mother, so... All right. Thank you, Anna. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Praise the Lord. It's good to be in His presence. It's good when you can hear the Word of God speaking to you. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the anointing of your Holy Spirit. We just thank you for your presence. And sometimes people don't understand when you're praying and we're silent before you. But that's because you're speaking. You're always speaking to your children. You said in your word that we would know your voice, we would obey your voice, and another voice we would not follow. If you didn't have a voice, you couldn't speak, but since you said it in your word, you have a voice, we know that you're always speaking. Father, we just pray that you'll anoint us so that our eyes will be able to see you, as you said also that you would reveal yourself to us in John chapter 6. And many other places. 
that our ears would be anointed to be able to hear. Hallelujah. And we just thank you that our mind and our hearts are, are being enlightened. They're being drawn. They're being anointed with your Holy Spirit to be drawn into your presence. So that we can have the revelation and the understanding that you want us to have to give to others in this great hour that's coming upon the earth. An hour that the earth has never known, nor will ever be after. Now, Father, we just thank you that we know you're in control. We know that there are mighty forces that think they're in control and are doing some horrific things. But, Father, we know that you are in control. And, Father, I just thank you for the anointed word that teaches us straight from the Holy Ghost with divine revelation. That you've called a remnant, a remnant of kingdom possessors that will reveal the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, if you will, and of his Christ. Hallelujah. For the earth in which we abide, Father. We're just so grateful to serve. I thought about Abraham in the tent door jumping up and running to the three men. And he says, oh, if I found favor in your sight, come on in, let me wash your feet and serve you. <laughs> it's such a different perspective of what we have in our land today, Father. And Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to serve others. Oh, Father, I just thank you that I've found favor in the eyes of many that I might serve them, Father. That I might love them the way you love them. Hallelujah. Thank you for the expression of your love upon us. And the giftings of the Holy Ghost. That word usually makes a lot of people nervous. The Holy Ghost. There have been many come out, Father, and you know their names that have attacked your word, that have attacked you. We understand that there were things that were changed in the translation, but it hadn't altered. But we can go back with the technology that we have today just like that and pick up and understand what you meant when it was translated and understand how it was changed. And so for the record... Your word is living and quick and powerful. Hallelujah. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Able to divide asunder between the joint and the marrow. Hallelujah. And Father, your word is also a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And your word, we learn, is Christ. And so we thank you. That you never have to be a silent guest in our home. Holy Spirit, you're always welcome here. Christ, you're always the head and the master of these hearts and this home. We bless you tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to break open the bread of life. Hallelujah. And share with others. Prepare us a glass, Anna, of grape juice and some unleavened bread and wafers that we might partake of communion, Anna. And we just thank you, Father, that you're able to speak to us and reveal what you desire. And Father, we give you honor. We give you all the praise for we don't have a ministry. We're just servants of the greatest ministry. The ministry of Christ, the gospel of Christ. We want to lead others to you. We want to cause them to be drawn to you. We're not offended and we're not intimidated by those that come that say, show us your God. We say, come forward, make yourself known, identify yourself, bless me. You bring whatever it is that you desire to see God do. And after you get through presenting your case and your God, whatever he can't do, my God will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise your Father. Praise your Father. Praise you, Holy Ghost, and praise you, Yeshua, our Savior. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit's wisdom tonight. In Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been an interesting week. <clears throat> God is still faithful. God is still on the throne. And God is always moving on our behalf. And He always has our best interests at heart. So it's really awesome to... To see the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, somehow you see me scrolling down, I got carried away in my notes, and I know I can't possibly get to all this in a timely manner tonight, but 
I would like to share with you that as God's prophetic clock begins to move, and I would like to give you some, some information that, you know, Christ just kind of spilled some things out there in John chapter 6, and he was talking about the last days. And uh, so uh, if you'll look at John chapter 6, I'll give you just a second to get there. Oh, time's up. That's a second, you know, folks. <laughs> anyway, praise God. Um, the unleavened wafers were in there on top of that uh, fruit basket holder. Uh, and this is the will, and this is the Father's will, excuse me, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again, raise it up again, raise it up again at what? At the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He's talking about raising it up again. In Daniel chapter 7, we can see some things that he begins to talk about the, the kingdom of heaven and he begins to talk about the kingdom possessors. Uh, the enemy, nor religion, which is part of the enemy, doesn't want you to understand the revelation that Christ has brought forth because they want to keep you in bondage to what they have proposed is God's way. Uh, now, that's religion, the spirit of religion. The spirit of religiosity is horrible. Okay? Um, turn to the Lord's table in your Bible, and get ready to pray over the communion that we're going to partake. And so, uh, just give her the hint of Corinthians and don't tell her nothing else. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. So, as... <laughs> sorry. So, as... As Christ began to say this thing, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. Now, as you read and you understand, as the Holy Ghost begins to give you revelation from John chapter 6, you begin to see that Christ is not just talking to those people that are there that have witnessed the greatest miracle. Uh, look at verse 14 there. I'm sorry, Tracy, we're on John chapter 6. Okay. Um, they were shuffling around getting some things together as the Holy Spirit was giving us some instructions. Wendy, help me. She put in John chapter 6. Okay, good. Me. John chapter 6, verse Thanks, 14. Man. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. It wasn't until after he had done the miracle before them that many would accept him and believe on him. Yet the miracle that he did, I can assure you, it was not for the naysayers. It was not for the unbelievers. That's not the way God works. Hallelujah. Many people hear about a prophetic word or, or a sign and a wonder or a miracle and a healing taking place and they're just, boom, they're ready to go. Friends, I'm here to tell you that that miracle working power is alive on the inside of you. And the greater works than Christ did are supposed to be flowing from us. He said, greater works than these will you do because I go to the Father. He has gone to the Father. He's not in that tomb. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Glory to His holy name. Now, instead of being quick to look for another place to find another word, I want you to understand that God is trying to flow through you with that word. There are many that are still sitting there wondering what to do with the Word. Glory to God that's alive, that's burning like fire shut up in your bones. Glory to God. And you hadn't done anything with it. But I'm here to encourage you to step out in faith and begin to speak the words that God gives you. Are you going to make some mistakes? Yes. Are you going to say some things and go back and look and say, Ooh, did I say that? Probably. But it's okay. Because... You're going to grow as you begin to minister and you begin to speak the way God wants you to speak. You're going to begin to grow. This is what's important. In our relationship in these last days, it's very important that we understand who we are and our identity has to come from God. Hallelujah. Okay? Now, Christ taught us in John also. He says, now, the days are coming and already are in John chapter 4. He said, where you will worship the Father in truth and in spirit. Right? D didn't he say that? 
But the hour is coming, John 4, 23. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Verse 24. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. There's no sense in coming to God with a promise and a fake heart because he's already, <laughs> I already told you, the word is quick and powerful. It's able to discern your thoughts and the intentions of your heart. So there's no sense in trying to not be real with God. Okay? I, I, this is just breaking it down in plain English. God's looking for consistency and he's looking for those that understand that he's a spirit. He said he created you. Let us make man in our image. God is three parts. He's body, soul, and spirit. The body of the Godhead is Christ. Hallelujah. The soul of the Godhead is the Holy Ghost. And the spirit is God. Christ even told us that God is spirit. We must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to tell you something. God doesn't care about how many people you minister to, feed, provide for, give, have your little celebrations with. He he, God's not as concerned about that. As he is his one-on-one -on -one time with you every mm. single day. Thank you, Jesus. God loves for you to worship him. And guess what? When you put him first and you begin to seek him. And you begin to love him with all that you are. He begins to flow through you. Mm. That's what Christ did. That's what he taught us to do. That's what we must do. There can be absolutely no open gates. There can be absolutely no way for the, the enemy can have nothing in you. Christ said the enemy's coming, but he has nothing in me. The enemy can have absolutely no access to you in these days in which we're living because he's calling you. In John chapter 6 and in Luke chapter 1, we read some phenomenal things about the bread of life and the God of holiness in which we serve. Now, people don't want to hear. They don't want to tolerate holiness. They're intolerant. They want to live like the world and, and have a little religious service. One or two hours a week and call themselves followers of Christ. It doesn't work that way. God is looking for consistency in relationship. Christ had a relationship with the Father. No matter how much he was taxed during the day to minister, he got along with God at night. If it took it, he prayed all night. If he couldn't pray all day because he was ministered, he prayed all night. Glory to God. And he wasn't worried about his reward. <laughs> He had a thief looking after the money bag. <laughs> this was a purse. This was a small bag in which he would often buy the things necessary to keep them alive. And he had women that supported him and fed him. And one of them was a, a, the wife of a great steward of Herod himself. And so he had... It, there was a there was some means in which these women prepared for them. And they were able to eat. But Christ often didn't eat. Why didn't he eat? It was put before him. Why didn't he eat? He was eating the Word. He was eating... Okay, if you will, the will of the Father. Okay? And so, he's trying to teach us what the will of the Father is. Right? <laughs> and as he began to teach what the will of the Father is, then people began to fall aside. They, they didn't understand. Okay? Now, a lot of people are trying to see Christ with their physical eye without entering into true relationship and worship. And, and I'm going to tell you something. The, the first way you're going to see God is in the Spirit. Okay, As the Holy Ghost draws you, the first way you will ever see the Father is through the Son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit, he, he tells you. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which He hath given me. Who did He give them to? He gave them to the Son. And this is the will of Him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son, glory to God, and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up the last day. So the will of the Father was to honor and glorify the Son. The will of the Son was to do the will of the Father. Can you begin to see how synonymous those two really are? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, how I love his word. He says uh, in, uh, in John chapter 6, in uh, verse 28, he says, Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Okay. Now, you know, after he crossed over, he fed the multitude, and he crossed over, and, and, and he began to minister again. There was, there was many that came to him, and they said, How would you get here? You know, et cetera, et cetera. 
but he, but he says to him, he says, most assuredly I say to you, verse 26, he said, most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. See, this is synonymous with the Lord's, the Last Supper. Okay, this is synonymous with the Eucharist that we partake of today. Okay, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Okay, and so... So there was a spiritual connotation that he was giving them. He was telling them that his life was being offered up as a living sacrifice, a libation, an offering poured out for the Father. And they couldn't grasp it. And he tells them, he says, do not labor, verse 27, chapter 6 of John, do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Now a lot of you can get excited right now and begin to shout and praise God because you know in the last days in Revelation, he sends his angel and he seals the children that belong to him. God's not going to lose any of us that belong to him. Period. The enemy can't take us. He can't force it upon us. He can't take us. A force upon us wouldn't work anyway. And, and you could do like Michelle Hopkins says, you could cut the, the thing out anyway. Yeah. Oh. What am I talking about? I'm talking about an RFID chip that many places in some other parts of the world right now are being forced to take an RFID chip in the fleshy part of their hand right now, in the right hand. I'm talking about people that are being killed in yeah. the Philippines right now. And they're being forced to take this right now. Right now. The hour is upon us to do the exploits for God. You cannot walk in fear. Mm -mm. If the demons feared and trembled at the presence of Christ, how much more then since He's gone to the Father and He's living His life through us and poured out the Spirit without measure, how much more then should they fear and tremble at you? They told the seven sons of Sceva, Paul I know, and Christ I know, but who are you? They shouldn't say that to you. They should know who you are. They should, and oftentimes they will. They'll just stop, you'll just run into people and they'll just begin to speak out of their head. The demons are manifesting themselves. Sometimes you have to tell them to shut up. As it was in the days of Christ. When he was upon the earth. Hallelujah. But we don't rejoice that the demonic is subject to us we rejoice that our names are written in the lamb's book of life it's a humble walk it's an honor to serve god and to move the way he's called us to move glory to his name mm, thank you jesus it's all right huh? therefore they said to him what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you. What work will you do? Now who, who's asking him this? Well this was the people that went on the other side of the lake. To get to him. Because he just fed them. And they were filled with the loaves. Now what did they say about him? In verse 14. John six fourteen. What did they say about him? I'm just trying to show you something. These are the same people. Then those men... When they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Look at verse 30. Okay. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? And we're not going to be able to get into the rest of this story right here, because we're going to flip over and we're going to learn some things about unbelief. Right here in this last day, it's very important that we have absolutely no unbelief. Because unbelief stops the hand of God. Doubt is unbelief. Okay, so here were these people were. They were in the presence. The holy presence. Glory to God. They were in the holy presence of the one that had fed them. They were so filled and they were so full and they were so anointed by what he had done. That they followed him on the other side of the seashore looking for him because they had been so filled with the bread and the fish that he had fed them. <laughs> because it was miracle food. And here he presents himself and tells them why they sought him, and then immediately they said, Well, 
What kind of sign are you going to do to show us that you're real? Haven't we put a lot of people to test that way? Saying, well, if I see a sign, then I'll believe. Do we often say that about God ourselves? If you'll do this, then I'll do this. We don't, there's no bartering with God. You come to Him as you are, and you surrender yourself as you are. He's the potter, we're the clay, and He molds us into the image of His Son. Mm. It's not what you want to become, it's not what I want to become, but it's what He desires to bring forth of His Son. It's our purpose is His ministry, the gospel of Christ. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 1, we read some of the most intriguing, uh, an account that Luke, Dr. Luke is writing to Theophilus, and uh, he gives his dissertation, and, and he begins to, to give an account, because many others had given an account, and why is he given this account? It's very important that you understand what's taking place here. Because he was an eyewitness. You're not talking about people that weren't eyewitnesses of the things of Christ. These are eyewitnesses of the things of Christ. These were his closest companions that wrote. Did all of them write? No. But some did. The birth of John was announced in Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 5, the number for grace. It says, There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Notice the connection. Zechariah, okay, of the division of Abijah, his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, the priest Aaron. Okay, you, you, you follow me now? And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. This wasn't someone that was unfaithful or inconsistent in their life, in their walk with Christ. This was somebody that was very consistent in their walk with God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but they had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord, and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. The people were outside praying while the priest went in. Zechariah, it was his lot, fell to him for him to go in to burn incense before Yah. Hallelujah! Glory to God. This isn't a, an, a divine appointment. This wasn't just happenstance. This wasn't coincidence. This is one of these miraculous moments that we just kind of read by the Bible real quick. You just read this out of the pages. It's there in the pages. We just read it out of the pages real quick. But we have to understand that God was doing something and He was saying something at an appointed time in history. He was making a statement. And it wasn't by coincidence that it fell on Zacharias time to burn the incense. Hmm. It was divinely appointed and orchestrated by the hand of God. He knew exactly when John was to be born. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Friends, when an angel appears to you, don't worry about what he says to you. Know for sure when he speaks the name of Christ, you'll know the difference between an angel of light and an angel of darkness by the peace and the witness of the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. If you're serving Christ, you should not be tormented by dark angels. So get that thought out of your head. Uh, so when an angel of the Lord appears to you, don't begin to question him about how he's going to do something or how God's going to do something. It's very important. Okay. I'll give you David's little uh, version of what I think was the discourse between the two. When Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. I mean, he's in here offering incense. There's nobody in there. Nobody can get in there. And all of a sudden, an angel's present. Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Talk about the supernatural. Okay. This is supernatural. Well, it scared him. Okay. 
I would have probably had to change my shorts too, but that's another story. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you know what I'm saying though? We need to be prepared for these kind of visitations though. Hallelujah. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. What is what, the first thing that he said to him? Your prayer is heard. What was he praying? He was praying for his wife. Because in that day it was considered, the man was considered blessed if he had a quiver full of sons. The wife was considered blessed if she had a fruitful womb. See, the fruit of the womb was most blessed. See, so what was he praying? Okay, let's see what the angel says. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you call his name John. Okay, now I want you to listen to this. And you'll have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Now listen to the declaration, okay, and the decree. This is not just a prophecy. He come from the throne room of God. Bingo. Mm. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, he will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the children, the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, <laughs> Look, I'm an old man. Me and my wife have separate quarters that we sleep in now. Um, she can't do it. She can't have this baby. She's past the year of childbirth. I, I don't know how I'm going to be involved in it. I'm an old man. Okay? I just thought I'd add that in there. That's David's commentary. It says, And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I'm an old man and my wife is well advanced in years. Okay, there's a lot for us to understand here. Zechariah says there ain't no way this can happen because my flesh is dead and my wife's flesh is dead. Her womb's dead. Okay, what did he just say? He just released unbelief. Okay. Unbelief. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel. Listen to this. Who stands in the presence of God and was speak, spent, sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. <laughs> An angel doesn't always tell you their name. But behold, you'll be mute and dumb and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe in my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speak speechless. So it was, as soon as the days of his service were completed, that he departed to his own house. Unbelief caused him to remain mute and dumb until the fulfillment of what had been spoken from the throne room of God. I want you to understand the difference in Zechariah and Mary. Hallelujah. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people. Now she's hiding herself because she's an elderly woman okay now in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent by god to a city of galilee named Nazareth. this is the same angel notice to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was joseph of the house of david the virgin's name was mary and having come in the angel said to her rejoice highly favored one the lord is with you blessed are you among women Hallelujah. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. For you have found favor with God. For you have found favor with God. Hallelujah. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, hallelujah, Christ. 
He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? Now, now a little interpretation, okay? Because it just leaves out a lot of details here. Mary says, Oh, I could never do anything outside the perfect will of God. Mm. And he says, You don't have to. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. And listen to what he says immediately. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. He said that she was highly favored for you have found favor with God and here he says with God nothing will be impossible then Mary said behold the maid servant of the Lord let it be to me according to your word and the angel departed from her it wasn't the same as Zechariah Zechariah says I can't have no babies my wife's dead I'm dead how, how in the world is this going to be that wasn't Mary's response I want you to understand that the holiness that is required of our Heavenly Father and the Messiah that we serve and the Holy Spirit is number one, we never walk in unbelief. If God says something to you, if He tells you to uh, go somewhere or do something, uh, it'll never be outside the Word, okay? If He tells you to do something, and it, like I heard this testimony of a man that, that didn't have any money that needed gas and the Holy Spirit told him to stop and get gas and, and as he was pumping the gas he was thinking every time the pump uh, clanged or dinged or whatever and he was thinking oh I gotta pay for this and I don't have no money and uh, before he could finish filling up his tank a guy from inside the store walked up and said sir I'm a new Christian and I just felt like the Lord told me to bless you tonight with a tank of gas see you know, we want to figure things out with our carnal mind. And that's what Zacharias was doing. We men want to figure everything out. You think you women want everything? Is your ducks in a row? Let me tell you something. The men want to put it down on paper. They want to graft it out. We want to draw it out. Okay. But there's a difference in a carnal man and a spirit-filled faith-born man. They're, they're two totally different things. Faith can accomplish anything. Okay. The carnal man can't accomplish everything. Okay, Now, this is the greatest testimony of a man being born on earth. Both of them at the same time. Now, Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary <laughs> that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Do you think this lady wasn't prophesying? They might not have wrote it in the margin there. you think this lady wasn't prophesying? The Holy Ghost fell on this lady and she immediately recognized that Mary was carrying the Son of Man, the Son of God. Glory to God. you think she wasn't prophesying right there? Sure, she was prophesying right there. They might not have put it in there. They might not have told it that way, but... That's exactly what was happening. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will... Listen to this. Blessed is she who believed... For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. Anna, what is it? Well, you won't take that out. Okay. Okay. Blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Understand that when the Holy Spirit tells you something... He's going to fulfill it. Now, you can't start down. Okay? You can't start walking in unbelief. Okay? Faith is honored. Faith has always been honored. 
And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. And holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her house. Now Elizabeth's full time came and she brought forth and delivered a son. When her neighbors and relatives heard how the Lord had shown great mercy to her, they rejoiced with her. So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child and they would have called him by his father's name, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, there's no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made signs to his father what he would call him. I want you to listen to what happened here. And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying his name is John. So they all marveled. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed. <laughs> and he spoke praising God. The first thing out of his mouth after it had been sealed these nine months or 10 months, ever what it was, was praise mm -hmm. to God. Do you, do you see this in the margin here? Mm -hmm. Then fear came on all who dwelt around them. And all these sayings were discussed throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all those who heard them kept them in their hearts, saying, What kind of child will this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. The hand of the Lord was on John. It was on Zacharias and Elizabeth. And the hand of God moved mightily throughout the land and throughout the hearts of the people. And he established something within the hearts of the people before John ever began to preach and to teach and to, and, and, and to uh, proclaim the way of the Lord. So the forerunner, uh, Zechariah goes on, and we'll get into that next week. Zechariah goes on and he begins to prophesy. Uh, about what God had done and what God was going to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so we, we have to understand that God was preparing the way for His Son Christ. And because of the announcement, because both of these people were old, they were past the years of childbearing. It was a marvelous thing. No doubt it was no different than what we had seen through Sarah and Abraham. It was a marvelous thing that an old man had come back to life and a woman's womb had come back to life and a child had been given. It was a marvelous thing already for this to happen, but for the man to be struck deaf and dumb, or not deaf, but dumb, mute, uh, from what he had experienced in unbelief and then for his tongue to be loosed and as soon as it was loose, as soon as he gave him the name John and it was fulfilled, his tongue was loose. So you see, there was a reputation that God was was building. Don't you know that God is building a reputation for you? Don't you know that the Holy Spirit is going before you? Shema. Jehovah Shema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you understand that the mightiness of Elohim is established in the children that are consistently seeking Him and worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. It's very important that we understand the principles of the kingdom mm. and to understand how they work. When the angels begin to manifest themselves more and more, and this is coming, folks, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon this land and He's still in control of the earth, belongs to him they tried to stop the birth of john they tried to stop the birth of christ hallelujah they couldn't stop it they're not going to be able to stop god from doing the great exploits that he's going to do in these last days the harvest is ripened it's white it's ready it's time for the reapers to go out into the harvest god's anointed you with a message release that message god's given you a vision Write it down. Perfect that vision. Spend time with Him praying and fasting. And do what He's called you to do. Whew. Glory to His name. He's an awesome God and He longs to bless His children. And He's going to bless His children through those that He's anointed to do great exploits. 
many are going to have visitations. It says in the word that the angels go forth to do the bidding of the Lord. They are consuming spirits of fire. Yes. Most of the time when they appear to you, they're transparent, but they don't have to be. They can be transformed into the, a man's body. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, because the book of Hebrews teaches us that many have entertained angels in the world. So I want you to understand that it's time.